and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, and today I am talking about the top 10 scary coincidences that changed the world. Now, coincidences are spooky things in themselves. Many people believe that they are signs that fate is real. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Coming at number 10, a leading Nazi was on a last minute vacation during the D-Day landings. A huge British wartime victory could have been very different if a German field marshal hadn't chosen that exact time to take his wife away. During the Normandy storm of 1944, Erwin Rommel, known as Desert Fox, decided to take his wife on a surprise trip for her birthday. He was a key strategist and a military tactician, and had he been in Normandy, things could have turned out very differently. The scary thing about this coincidence is how different the world could be right now if the Allies lost the battle. Coming into number 9, we have the sinking of the SMS Captain Trafalgar. Okay, so this is some mind altering stuff, stick with me. The British Navy converted a cruise ship, the RMS Carmania, into a warship. They disguised this as an existing German passenger liner called the SMS Captain Trafalgar. This was in order for the vessel to escape detection. Now it worked, and the actual Carmania, disguised as the Trafalgar, sank a German ship. Now this ship was the actual, legit, real life SMS Captain Trafalgar, which the Germans had decided to disguise as the RMS. RMS Carmania. What? Maybe wind that back and listen again if you don't get it, because it's taken me like 10 times to understand. This is a freakish coincidence. Anyway, the sinking of the German ship was a huge setback for the German war effort and impacted the way that they moved forward. 51 Germans were killed and 279 captured. Who knows what they could have achieved in the war had they not been on board. Coming into number 8, Seth MacFarlane and Mark Wahlberg missed their flight on 9 11. Family Guy and American Dad creator Seth MacFarlane and actor and former rapper Mark Wahlberg were both supposed to be on planes involved in the 9-11 attack. Both men were scheduled to be on American Airlines Flight 11, which is absolutely insane. Now, Coincidentally, McFarlane's travel agent told him the wrong time for the flight and he was late. He missed the plane. Now, This plane would have ended up being flown into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Wahlberg made a last minute decision to fly to Toronto for the film festival instead. If they had died that day, the world would have had no American Dad, The Cleveland Show, or any Wahlberg movies, including Ted on which the pair collaborated together. And of course, no Wahlburgers, which is obviously a travesty. Coming into number 7, we have Tamerlane's body and Operation Barbarossa coincidence. Tamerlane was a Turco-Mongol conqueror and the founder of the Timurid Empire. He lived between 1336 and 1405, but his tomb was opened and his body exhumed by the Soviets just days before the Nazi troops launched a planned attack. His tomb was said to hold a curse that read, When I rise from the dead, the world shall tremble. Whomsoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I. Now, three days later, Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the largest military invasion of all time, with heavy losses. This is a really, really, really scary coincidence. Barbarossa, of course, was an event that changed the world and also marked the decline in Hitler's stronghold. Coming into number six, we have the weird events surrounding the sinking of the Titanic. Now, the sinking of the Titanic was eerily foreshadowed in Morgan Robertson's The Wreck of the Titan. The story, written in 1898, so 14 years years prior to the sinking of the Titanic depicts scarily similar circumstances. A luxury ship, the Titan, is hailed as unsinkable. It then hits an iceberg on a cold April night and goes down. Sound familiar? Also in the book, the boat is a similar size and length to the Titanic. It travels around the same speed and drum roll, there were not enough lifeboats for passengers. Is this a weird coincidence or was Robertson a clairvoyant? Obviously the sinking of the Titanic really did change history for, you know, ever. Coming in at number Five, we have Lewis and Clark almost not making it through their expedition alive. Captain Meriwether Lewis and Lieutenant William Clark crossed the western point of the United States between 1804 and 1806. Their journey and discovery shaped modern America. At one point, the pair were captured by a Native American tribe. Their female guide Sakagawe discerned that the tribe planned to kill or desert them, but it all turned around when she discovered that the leader of the tribe was actually her long lost brother. Weird. She was stolen by a rival tribe when she was younger, and she only just recognized them then. As a result, the crew were gifted horses and allowed safe passage. What a coincidence. If that hadn't have happened, well, honestly, who knows? Coming in at number four, we have the savior that was Teddy Roosevelt's thick speech. Theodore Roosevelt was very nearly killed in 1912 when he campaigned for re-election, but he was saved by a thick speech and a glasses case. In 
In an eerie coincidence, Roosevelt placed the folded up paper and glasses case in his breast pocket, the exact area he was shot by a saloon keeper, John Flaming Shrank. He was saved by the contents of his pocket, and as he was not coughing up blood, he concluded that his lung hadn't been pierced, so he would continue his speech. On stage, he said, I shall ask you to be as quiet as possible. I don't know whether you fully understand that I've just been shot, but it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. Bull moose. Good. Coming into number three, we have the eerily weird circumstances surrounding the assassinations of President Lincoln and President Kennedy. So the assassinations of Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy have some very, very, very strikingly similar circumstances. Lincoln was the first president to be shot, and Kennedy the last. The pair were both killed on a Friday before a big public holiday. They both sat beside their wives, who weren't injured. Both were succeeded by a vice president named Johnson. Andrew was born in 1808, and Lyndon in 1908. Both had two daughters. At both assassinations, the presidents were with another couple, the male of which were wounded. Lincoln's assassin shot him at a theater and then fled to a warehouse, whereas Kennedy's killer fired at a warehouse, then fled to a theater. Both assassins were then killed by shooters with a cult rival. Just so many weird things. Obviously, both assassinations changed history forever, and like, who knows what was going on there? Coming into number two, we have the three cigars that created America. Having grown up in the United Kingdom, I wasn't taught a lot of the fine in detail about the American Civil War, so I literally just learned about this insane, world-altering coincidence while researching for this video, and I'm like, pretty shook. Basically, in 1862, Confederate Commander Robert E. Lee drafted a war plan called Special Order 191. Now, this outlined the movements of the Confederate Brigade over the next few months. This was every Confederate Brigade. He gave copies of these orders to his trusted generals, including the somewhat lazy Stonewall Jackson. Jackson then gave some copies of these to his commanders, even though he probably shouldn't have, because they probably didn't have the authority to have those plans themselves. One of his commands in turn, Daniel Harvey Hill, totally discarded his. He wrapped them around three cigars and then left them at a campsite when his brigade moved on. Days later, Union scout Barton W. Mitchell found the cigars. As he was about to smoke them, he looked at the wrapping and thought that they looked actually pretty important. It was. The wrapping then ended up in the hands of General George McClellan, who recognized Robert Lee's handwriting. With the plans, the Unions were able to stage a full offensive at the Battle of Antietam. Now, this was a tipping point in the Civil War that gave the North the upper hand. Finally, coming into number one, we have a truly crazy coincidence. This one, this one turn of a corner changed the world forever. That's right, we have Franz Ferdinand getting shot. The spark that ignited World War One was a total coincidence. Scary, really, how the peace of Europe hung in the balance with such fragility. Basically, what happened here was that Austro-Hungarian leader Archduke Franz Ferdinand Ferdinand escaped an initial assassination attempt while he was in Sarajevo. A bomb was thrown under his motorcade by the Serbian Black Hand Gang. Luckily, or so he thought, Ferdinand survived, but in some final destination style turn of events, the initial assailant, Gravillo Princip, happened to be in a cafe where the Archduke's motorcade drove by again. This time, his car stalled and gave him enough time to shoot him and his wife. This was the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of the ignition of World War One, and what a scary coincidence, and this really did change the world forever. So guys, there we have it. Do you believe in coincidences? Let me know in the comments section down below. Do you think there's a higher force at play here? I'm really interested to hear what you have to think. For now, I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. If you like this video, make sure you give it a good thumbs up, share it with a friend, and stay subscribed for more Most Amazing Lists. Bye! <laughs>